What is up, beautiful people? It's Wolf Brother Mythos Cushionado from the channel Frost and Fist, and welcome to Wolf Brother Wednesday. So, going straight into the hobby update, guys, I have been killing it. Um, you know, India on the bench. <laughs> I can't even say my hobby room because I've got just a little section of the counter uh, next to the uh, the sink in my kitchen. That's my hobby space because I live in a very um, humble sized apartment. And uh, on my hobby space, I've just been putting in a lot of work. Um, I've been real busy over the last week. In fact, we're prepping for another audit. And so I've been working late a lot over the last week. But with just a little time each day, I've been getting it in wherever I can fit it in. And so a little bit each day, knocking out that orc mission. It was only 12 pieces plus an orc pain boy. Um, but I finished up uh, last Thursday, last Friday. I finished up um, the 12-man orc squad over the weekend, got them based up, um, then did the pain boy over the weekend, and just last night, I finished up the washes, the highlights, and the basing on the pain boy. So that commission is pretty much complete. Just a couple touch-ups here and there, and then going to go on to uh, uh, sealing it up, and that'll be turned into the client. So really 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 excited to have that one done also really excited to move on to the dark angels and um the primus medica and the uh praetor tribune uh, that i have for the dark angels that i'm doing even though they're horus heresy models these are going to be do uh, done up in their 40k colors so the green with white highlights um just because that's the way the uh, client asked for them to be painted up but i'm really excited to get this one done all right, guys, so after those Dark Angels, I will only have three more models to work on for my commissions. And that is going to be uh, for the Night Lords, a chaplain on bike, the Loyalist Night Lords, of course. Um, then I will have uh, a Greyfax, in uh, Inquisitor Greyfax to work on, and the Death Roller for the Blood Bowl Dwarves that I recently uh, did a showcase on. Got in the Death Roller from Forge World. Real excited to put that together and get her all painted up. So those would be my last three things that I currently have on the bench for my commission. With that, I'm going to announce that um, after those, uh, you know, these last five things I'm working on for the commission, okay, the two Dark Angels and those last three items I mentioned, I'm not going to be taking any more com uh, commissions for at least a month. I'm just going to have a solid month of working on stuff for the Silver Moon Wolves. And that's because I've got something uh, that recently arrived that I'm ready to do a very special unboxing for you on. Okay, on top of that, there was the unboxing I showed you guys last week of that Imperial Knight that uh, shout out Richard over at the Nerd Life, formerly known as Tattoo For You, sent me. Super stoked about putting that together. Um, so that needs to be put together. This special unboxing is going to need to be put together. They're both going to need some paint. And if I have any time after those things, I want to get to my St. Celestine. So I'm going to give myself 30 days to really hustle and put out some work for the Silver Moon Wolves. So I'm really excited. I've been more motivated uh, and really <laughs> making time, even at the sacrifice of some sleep lately, to just really get in there and knock out some projects. I've been... You guys know how it is when motivation strikes. In fact, um, this morning, I had pretty much finished the uh, uh, the pain boy last night, and I was letting the washes dry when I went to bed. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I was looking at it, and I saw that the eye was just too, too large and too noticeable to not paint. So I ended up running just slightly late for work this morning because I just had to break out the brushes and paint that eye on that pain boy um, before I went to work. But you guys know how it is. You can get addicted to the hobby and you just want to fit in each new pe each new thing that you can when you are that motivated. So really looking forward to wrapping up these five things. Really looking forward to some of these special projects that I've got coming up over the next month. And uh, be excited to share those with you. So the next thing I want to do is go straight into the Q&A. And I'm going to start with the questions that you find YouTubers put out to the community for us to answer. And I'm going to start with Pete over at Mini Warzone. 
And Pete asks, what food instantly reminds you of your childhood when you see it, smell it, or taste it? And this is going to be a couple of things, but in general, good, authentic Thai food does it for me. There is a beef, or there is a noodle soup in Thailand called Gwitio that my mom makes the best. Don't tell my grandma, because my mom really does make it the best. Um, but <laughs> but it is my absolute favorite Thai dish, especially when my mom makes it. And anytime we get it now, you know, especially I love when asking for it. I'll ask for that on my birthday over any other cake or anything else or present. I was just like, Mom, I really want some good deal. Um, But when she makes it up, I mean, just the smells that go with it, the taste and flavor, you know, just even in, uh, even the way she puts it together because it's a very much a, a – it starts with a very rich and a very rich broth that takes a long time to get just the right flavors for. But then you kind of dress it up the only, you know, the way you like it. You know, in my case, I like some fish sauce, some red pepper – you know, a little bit of vinegar, a touch of sugar in it. You know, I like a lot of uh, uh, mint and cilantro in it. You know, it's a lot of bold flavors. You know, definitely some sriracha. You know, but each person kind of dresses it up their own way. It's like the soup is the base for what it is that you're eating. So, anyways, good Thai food like that. The glutio, um, uh, Thai pork porridge, uh, pork rice porridge soup. Uh, jok, I think is what it's called. I'm very terrible at pronouncing things in Thai. That's why you guys don't hear me talk about my Thai side very often. Is because I'm the worst Thai descendant out there. But it's, I, I will eat the Thai food all day. Um, so rice porridge is another one that anytime I taste it, I'm instantly transported back to my childhood. Uh, s sticky rice rolled into rice balls um, with uh, baked or fried chicken gizzards. I have not. So Lily just reminded me of why um, <laughs> I'm I, why I'm the worst Thai descendant out there. So my mom tried to teach me some Thai when I was much much when I you know when I was just a boy. And Thai is such an interesting and difficult language to learn because it's not just the word you say, but the tone that you use. You know the inflection that you use can change the entire meaning of the word. For instance, uh, so um, my grandmother called, and when I heard that it was her, I said, Sawadi uh, Gunyai. And Sawadi, of course, is hello. And then you say, uh, I said Gunyai to say, you know, grandmother or great mother. Okay, but uh, again, not having the right tone or inflection can greatly change. Okay, so what, you're, what it is that you're trying to say. So instead of saying, um, grand as in you know a great mother right I ended up saying the wrong kind of grand and saying that she was very large and fat so uh, I basically ended up calling her fat mother um, she was very very displeased with me and I got a lot of yelling and then she said put your mother on and then she yelled at my mother my poor mother and then I stopped trying to speak to her. Um, so yeah that didn't go well um, and I, I, I later on tried to pick it up again and made yet more mistakes that were almost as embarrassing. But that one definitely takes the cake. But yes, uh, sorry, I'm way off topic, Pete. Uh, but yes, traditional Thai foods, when I have them, instantly remind me of my childhood and being with my mom. Uh, great question, Pete. Um, Kuja over at Kuja Hira asks, what brand of phone do you prefer? Now, I've always been an Android over iPhone kind of guy. Uh, but as far as actual brands, I'm not like super hardcore sold on one brand. I enjoy the uh, Galaxy series. Um, I really loved having, I had a Google Nexus for a long time and the Google Nexus was my favorite phone. They don't make the Nexus anymore. I think Google makes something else now. Um, but now, you know, because I'm broke all the time, because Warhammer probably, um, I can't afford a neck or whatever the new Google phone is, and so um, I'm on a budget, I'm on a, a uh, Samsung Galaxy Sky, which is the budget Samsung Galaxy right now, and I like it okay, I like the Galaxy series in general, um, I'm not definitely, you know, sold or married to the Galaxy, I'll, I'll, 
I'll try out whatever works until then. Um, but if I could get another Google phone, I really liked the first Google, the first couple Google phones I had. I had to have that one replaced several times. Uh, not because anything was wrong with the phone, just random accidents kept happening. Like, I had a, a, a my phone slip and fall into a pool once, and once into the bathtub. <laughs> and it, it's funny because when it was fell into the bathtub, it was set quite a ways away from the tub. It was one of those things that as it fell, I went to grab it, and as I tried to snatch it up out of the air, it just knocked it across the room and into the bathtub. Craziness. Anyways, but yes, Google's phones have, think, have been my favorite so far. I really enjoy, I keep looking this way because my Galaxy is over here. Um, the, but the Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy series has been pretty awesome. Although the Galaxy Sky, the budget version, doesn't take super nice, crisp uh, pictures like my brother's. Uh, he's got the high-end Galaxy, uh, and that one takes amazing pictures. This one doesn't take great pictures, so what I do usually do is I cheat and... Um, I borrow an iPhone to take pictures of my models for for commission painting and then send it to my current phone, the, the uh, Galaxy Sky, just because that's the only thing it doesn't do super extremely well is that it doesn't take amazing pictures. Uh, and Apple phones do happen to take amazingly crisp pictures. Um, rambling on, but yes, I like Google phones uh, the best. Uh, galaxies are just fine. Not really an Apple person, but they do take amazing photos. My man Richard over at the Nerd Life, formerly known as Tattoo for You. Richard, I'm sorry, man. I really have no idea how long it's going to be until I stop saying formerly of Tattoo for You. It, it happens every time in, up here in the brain, and I don't even know why. I had to struggle so hard not to say brain piece because Lily's right here and she hates when I say that. Anyways, so. Uh, if you had one dream car, what would you get if you had the opportunity? My dream car, I think, right now, it's funny because it used to be all sports cars. You know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, that kind of thing. Um, but now I think, pretty sure my answer would be a, uh, you know, a, a Hummer H2. You know, I would want one white with, uh, with chrome, trim, chrome trim all around it. And the reason for that is that uh, long ago... Uh, when the first Transformer movies came out, me, my brother, and another brother named uh, Cloud, we all made our own Transformers characters, right? And we kind of wrote out these characters, different scenarios. Um, and anyways, uh, we were all triple changers with a sky, uh, sky mode and a uh, ground mode, right? And our ground mode, my ground mode was the Hummer H2 um, that I could have like a little... My version was the Hummer H2, and uh, it was white with chrome on it. It was pretty nice looking. Well, I mean, in my head. Wow, I'm rambling so much today. Uh, but thank you for your question, dude. His beautiful wife, Red, says, If you could design your own lip color, what would it be, and what would you call it? Now this, at first I was like, Man, I don't know anything about makeup, so this would be a this is going to be a difficult question to answer. But actually, it's not going to be a difficult question because, um, being that we work on our models all the time, what I do know is paints, right? Or I know colors from paints. So I am going to theme my answer with this. Uh, Kristen, I'm sure you don't know because you're not into all this nerdiness stuff, but. Uh, the base of my answer is that I trim my soldiers, or er, I color my soldiers with black armor and silver trim to the armor. And I think that's going to be my answer, is I would want lipstick that has two parts. A black lipstick to go around the lips, and then a, a, a an outlining color, a thin silver line that could go around it so it would be silver and black. And I would call the um, color combination Silver Moon named after my silver moon army so yeah uh thank you for your question uh, lady red my next question comes from tlr wargaming the lone ranger and the lone ranger asks what would you buy models for a game 
that no one near you plays, especially if it's bigger than a skirmish game. So up until that last part, I was definitely on board because one of the games or model, one of the things that I'm planning on collecting models for is um, the Batman game um, because I've always been a DC Comics fan, and Batman and the Bat Family especially are my favorites. And so you know, I definitely want to collect a Bruce. I want to collect a, a Nightwing. I want to collect a Red Robin, uh, an actual Robin. Uh, a Jason Todd or Red Hood you know I want to collect all these guys um, just because Bat Family has always been my favorite thing and um, my man over at uh, of course Pete over at Mini Warzone has been into the Batman figures and watching him paint Marvel and Batman figures has made me want to uh, collect and paint some also my man over at the Warp Forge um, also does has a huge focus on the Batman miniatures game and he is constantly constantly do getting new uh, models um, doing Batman bat reps you know it's really exciting to watch and I don't know anyone in the area that plays the Batman miniatures game but the models look so cool and seeing them do the models up it's really inspiring and so I, I want to get in on that now that is a smaller game a skirmish game that I would basically just be buying the models to paint them and doing the hobby portion. Uh, however, I thought, considered that with other things too. Infinity, I, I don't know anyone in uh, in my local group who plays Infinity, but the models just look so cool. I kind of want to get into it. I want to get into it for, you know, uh, putting an army together just for the look of it, you know, because the aesthetics are pretty awesome. Um, and I think it would be cool to have a few of those badass looking models on the shelf. So that would be something I look into. But again, Infinity is another skirmish game. Um, Frostgrave, uh, I'm trying to get other people into. So again, another skirmish game. So I'm getting a, a collection of skirmish games under my belt here that I'm starting to grab things for, um, but no one in my area plays yet, uh, which hopefully will change. But um, another one is, of course, Age of Sigmar. Now, however, that one I was planning on start, you know, starting to slowly uh, build up an army so I could work on the, those gorgeous models, have them, you know, for channel, you know, use them for channel content as well. Um, but people in my local area, you know, there's starting to be a little bit of interest uh, coming up from, especially with the similarities between Eighth Edition and Age of Sigmar. So um, some of the guys in my area are starting to get interested in that Age of Sigmar. I might actually have other people play with should I get some models to start uh, partaking. And um, if I do, which I'm, I'm pretty sure I am going to get into Age of Sigmar, I think I'm going to go um, Stormcast Eternals. But I, I don't like the really weird helmets that they have. That I, I, The Stormcast Eternal helmets, uh, just, uh, that face looks kind of not my style. So I think I'm going to take some Wolf Helms and put them on the Stormcast Eternals and uh, put a Wolf Brother spin on it. So, anyways, uh, bringing all that uh, back together to say, um, I, no, I haven't, but I have thought of the same thing for those smaller skirmish games. A uh, really great question, my man. All right, so those are the questions that I grabbed from some other channels. Um, you know, all the uh, links to those guys will be down in the description below. And now I'm going to take a look at some of the comments I had last week and grab some of the questions there. Uh, my man Freak uh, says, great hobby update and Q&A Q &A as always. The other brother Freak. Thank you very much, Freak. Wargaming Wizard said, great Q&A, my brother. I love Jack Daniels and Lemon Iced Tea, but no, not together. <laughs> well, sounds like a wise choice to keep them apart, my friend. Um... I think 2018 you should do Lunar Wolves and do the Mournival with Loken, Abaddon, uh, Tarek, and Horus Aximand. You know, I, I, I really like the idea of doing um, uh, the, uh, the Lunar Wolves. So, you know, 2018 may have to be my year. I mean, Nick over at Edict Beer 40K has already dubbed 2018 as the Year of Chaos. So, I mean... You know, if that's what um, our glorious leader says, 
you know, that we all have to do some chaos, I may have to look into those lunar wolves, you know, if I had to, you yeah, know, so. Um, besides, I need myself a 30k for, so uh, maybe I can have the silver moon wolves in the 40k and uh, some lunar wolves in the 30k. We'll take a look. Might be a good upcoming project. Emperor, huh? <laughs> Sam over at the Emperor's Path says, agreed. He also says, great video, dude. I second what Jason said. Get yourself some Luna Wolves for sure. Might be, might have to be a plan, guys. Um, if you guys would like to see me, um, you know, give in to a little chaos and put together some 30K Luna Wolves, let me know, let me know down in the comments below. Because uh, this would be a great way for me to explore a new, a new army while still being a wolf brother. Pete over at Mini War Zone says, wow, what a great show. You certainly seem to have had an interesting life thus far. So glad you got the CD with no problems. Like I said last week, guys, I got this, uh, the CD from when Pete was in a band. And guys, it is really, really awesome. In fact, number nine is an instrumental and that one is just, it gets stuck in my head all the time just because it's so action-y sounding. Like, you could really envision some really cool action scenes to this song, like The Matrix or whatever. Very cool CD. A lot of that, a lot of the songs on the CD have that, that kind of feel where you could see it in an action movie. So, um, definitely cool stuff. Uh, the Frost and Fist Gaming Store sounds like a dream vacation. Live that dream, my brother. I really want to get there. I really want to get to the point where we can open up a Frost and Fist Gaming Store and do painting studio, YouTube studio, all in one. That would be so, so awesome. Uh, Edic Beer. I'm going to skip over Edic Beer because uh, his question goes deep, and I'm going to end the show on that one. Big Mech Dance Cole said, Great show, my man. Question, I've often struggled with batch painting, but recently I seem to be getting into a groove whilst watching longer YouTube videos, be it a live stream from Wargamer Online, shout out to Wargamer Online, um, or the always fabulous Wolf Brother Wednesday. Are there any tips you'd care to share um, that you find help yourself when painting large numbers of models? Uh, <laughs> the, big, the biggest answer for me is that... Uh, not really. I'm not very successful at big batch painting. In fact, um, when I first got into commissions, I uh, I did up 20 Marines all at once of the same the same 30k Marine. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, after doing 20 of the same Marine in a row, at first I was like, this feels very productive. And then after a while, I'm like, ah, oh, this feels like a burnout. <laughs> I'm I'm done with I'm done with tactical Marines for now. Um, and of course. You know, once I took just a short break, you know, um, I got right back into my groove. But um, big batch painting uh, definitely is a tough way to go. I uh, I prefer to stick to small squads of, um, you know, 5 to 10 myself. Of course, I did just recently do 12. But the other thing you said, um, getting into a groove while watching something long, that's definitely been the biggest key for me is uh, not paying, I mean, paying attention to do a good job, but having something other than that to take your mind off of it. Recently, I've been watching a ton of Arrow and The Flash with my beautiful wife, and, uh, you know, we'll burn through, you know, half of a season in a night sometimes. And honestly, while I'm, you know, I'm over there doing my painting thing while watching the show, it's got something, you know, the something to curb the ADD part of my mind can focus on the show, while my hands and you know what I'm you know I'm still got part of myself focused on the painting but it doesn't feel like a long chore that way so I think you've got the right of it you know I think uh, having something to take your attention off of what you're doing um, such as a long video and yeah that really takes the monotony out of it I also saw a great tip over at Wargamer Online I'm sure you saw it uh, up recently and he uses uh, old pieces of sprue um, to be able to uh, get down his primer coat all in one line at one time and that seems like a, a great time saver. Go check out uh, Sam's tip over at Wargamer Online. So I'm going to answer your question by referring you to someone else. 
How classy of me. Uh, my man over at Big Beard Painting. Top stuff mythos. Great vid as usual. Looking forward to seeing that Imperial Knight painted. I really need to get one of those. Question for next week. Do you play or intend to uh, try any other war game systems? So, uh, just like I was saying earlier, I'm intending to get into Age of Sigmar at some point. Uh, also, my man Zai is hooking me up with a Blood Bowl team, so that'll be a, an awesome game for me to play. Um, so, Age of Sigmar, Blood Bowl, and then Frostgrave. I really want to get into at some point. Um, I just need to make the time to build up the terrain for Frostgrave because most of my terrain is, you know, uh, modern, you know, or sci-fi, you know, uh, ruin factory kind of uh, 40k terrain. So I definitely need to uh, get some more fantasy-esque terrain. Um, something of like a frozen city kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, once I get some terrain for that, I could probably be able to use the fantasy terrain in Age of Sigmar and Frostgrave. So, you know, double win there. Um, but yeah, those are a couple games I really am interested in getting into. Um, so, great question, my man. Um, definitely shout out. You know, I feel like I, I want to send as many people as I can over to Big Beard Painting because my man's got uh, 22 subs right now and definitely deserves so much more. He's a really, really talented painter and just uh, awesome personality and managed to fit, uh, manages to fit in YouTube and that hobby life with six kids. You got six kids in the house. It's hard to do anything, but he is making it happen here on the YouTube and with amazing paint jobs in the hobby. So go check out my man at Big Beard Painting. Uh, Forge the Wild said, a privilege to watch as always, sir. Keep up the good work. Guys, if you've seen some of my previous battle reports um, with Atlas, you know, Imperial Guard player, heck of a guy. Um, he recently started that YouTube channel, Forge the Wild, and um, he's got some stuff with his military service. It's going to be ex-guard versus marines. Uh, but he also does some stuff with survival. In fact, he recently put up a video called Bushcraft, How to Make a Hut. From nature, you know, pieces of bushes, twine, building up a hut from nothing but nature. Go check that out. You can learn some serious survival skills from my man Atlas. Oversoul Gaming, a YouTube Let's Player, friend of mine, Oversoul Gaming, you should check him out. Just said you've had quite the week. Definitely have, my man. Last couple weeks have been absolutely swamped. James and his stuff. Cool vid, keep up the good work. Thank you, my brother. Warforge says, finally get around to paint Space Wolves. Enjoy the Wolf Brother Wednesday. Thank you, my man. Uh, I am definitely looking forward to seeing your Space Wolves because, you know, uh, I always enjoy checking out uh, work that other Wolf Brothers put out, my man. Um, checking out other people's Space Wolves is definitely uh, a hobby of mine. And then, of course, Will Gaines, also known as Shroud, says, oh, wow, I didn't realize you were working on the limited edition characters for Horus Heresy. Awesome. And orcs can't wait. So, uh, Shroud is the one who is uh, commissioning me to do these orcs that I'm currently working on. And good sir, they are done. You will get them this Friday. All right, so going back to Edic Beer, because he, uh, he had a heavy question of saving it for the end. One, the easy one, says, um, what's your favorite coffee? Great question, Nick. My absolute favorite coffee right now is CDM, Café du Mont. And um, my brother Freak turned me on to that coffee. Absolutely delicious stuff. Nice and dark, earthy. Um, but I like drinking that with a uh, coconut cream creamer. Um, Almond Joy makes a, a coconut cream creamer. Um, I've seen a couple other brands. And just in general, coconut cream creamer. Um, say that 10 times fast is absolutely delicious in this coffee and even when I go to Starbucks with my brother dark light dreamer every Saturday well every Saturday that I don't have a meeting anyways um, we go hang out there and I like to get caramel uh, caramel macchiatos with coconut milk for that same kind of uh, sweet creamy coconutty coconutty kind of taste so um, mouthful to say but yeah absolutely coffee with coconut cream creamer is my absolute favorite um, your next question is why did you get expelled from school 
All right, guys. So, the secret comes out. Um, so, I haven't always been uh, the happy-go-lucky, calm wolf brother that you guys see before you. Um, much like a brand new space wolf, you know, when they first emerge as a young gray hunter, they have to deal with their anger problems and being able to rein in that temper and make making sure that the beast doesn't come out of them. And definitely that's been something I've struggled with all my life is making sure that the beast doesn't come out of me. Um, and um, I have a, a lot of uh, anger problems. I've worked through some of them. I don't have nearly as many anger problems as I used to. Um, but because of that, um, you know, I had a real strict uh, military uh, dad and, and a very of uh, he was just one to in, do a lot of enforcing, you know, by tearing you down, telling you how fat and stupid you are and how you're never going to amount to anything in life. And, uh, you know, just really reinforcing the whole um, fat, lazy, stupid thing in you. Um, he did a lot of reinforcing with, uh, uh, you know, um, knuckles or the flat of his hand. Um, and I remember one time uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I said something um, while get, gathering up the trash because I was in trouble for not taking out the trash. And uh, he went to kick the trash can, you know, in a show of dominance to kick it, uh, I guess, out of my hands or whatever. But didn't completely just get the trash can, accidentally ended up kicking me in the stomach so hard I blacked out in pain. Anyways. Um, anyway, yeah, just, I don't mean to overshare uh, just kind of giving you an idea of what I kind of grew up with and I, I was dealing with a lot of anger problems from like, I, I guess that's just part of uh, how I survived and made it through that was, we all took our scars you know uh, emotionally um, but I, I left my childhood with a lot of anger and so anyways after he was no longer in the picture he wasn't around anymore I did a lot of I guess I went into a rebellious phase. I, I, I skipped class a lot. Um, you know, I met a. <laughs> it all went south when I met a girl. Uh, I skipped class a lot, and uh, um, she ended up getting pregnant. And then uh, I was, at the same time, accepted into the DC School of Math and Science uh, for my writing of all things. I mean, I had overall good grades, but they were starting to plummet. <clears throat> um, and uh, after I got this girl pregnant we were still trying to go to school and make it work and um, anyways allegedly uh, she had been called into the principal's office to discuss how um, I was going to be getting a scholarship anymore because of her influence on me and my behavior after hang, starting to hang out with her and, you know, um, how she was basically destroying my future. Now, I say allegedly, because the, the, the way the rest of the story goes. Um, so, uh, she one day was feeling too pregnancy sick to go to class. And I come home after he talks to her. And there is, while pregnant, um... Some Boone's Farm, which is a, a local malt liquor, I guess, and or not local, but it's a here in the states. It's a malt liquor, and a knife. And a, she allegedly was, felt so bad after being yelled at by the principal that she was going to commit suicide. And my first thought was, okay, so my girlfriend and potentially my child were just endangered based off what this guy insensitively said to her. Now, I, as an adult, now that I've had some experience in life, I realize this was all staged for my benefit. Um, but at the time, I acted rashly. 
and I marched back up to the school and uh, I looked at you know the uh, the principal right in the face and explained to him how he put my girlfriend and my potentially unborn child in danger and I told him exactly how I felt about that and if I were to tell you exactly what I said there would be a lot of bleeps and you wouldn't be able to hear anything anyways um, so anyways he just turned bright bright like bright red and then brick dark brick red and told me to get the hell out of his office and that I was expelled and I'd never you know I'd never go to school at any class in this city ever again and that my future was over that kind of thing and I, I upset him I'm sure um, but he told me I was expelled and it wasn't until about 10 years later when I was telling my story to someone else that somebody said you realize that you have to have a, a hearing with the school board in order to be expelled and not able to go back to other classes. Um, of course, by that time, I'd already gone and gotten my GED and moved on with my life. And I, I learned to, you know, I, I learned, I got that person that was being a negative influence in my life out of the picture um, because there were a few other shady things that happened. Um, and I realized that that person was not a good influence in my life. Uh, I moved on and got my GED, and uh, <clears throat> uh, eventually, um, you know, got my certifications now in behavioral, uh, you know, behavioral science and occupational safety, and uh, some other um, security style classes. Um, and so I, I moved past that, but my education was compromised way early in life because of the way that I overreacted to the principal and that the way the principal overreacted to me. I mean, ultimately I brought it on myself, um, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty deep story, Nick. That's why I got expelled. Um, so you guys are dealing with a, a former, or, well, I guess somewhat formerly a very rash individual. I'm definitely a lot calmer than I used to be. Um, and I've done identified where I've made some mistakes in life. and. Uh, like I said in uh, my addendum, Wolf Brother Wednesday last week, is, you know, I can see where the beast inside of me has done damage in my life, and I can try and keep him reined in and just try and make sure I don't make those same mistakes going forward. And I've had a lifetime of trying to learn how to keep him calm, how to, how to not take things so personally. Um... It's a struggle, though. Um, you know, struggle knowing some of the things that I've done. <laughs> like right there, throwing away a, a paid scholarship to the School of Math and Science. But <clears throat> um, a lot of my friends had gotten to go there, too. Um, and a lot of them are really successful people now. So I realized, looking back, that I kind of threw away a lot by letting by acting on my, my instinct and my temper. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I'm not that person now. And I sometimes I sometimes get really angry but I know that I am nowhere near being the person I was before. I'm going on a little too long about this now. Anyways, <clears throat> thank you for <clears throat> the question, Nick. Uh, <clears throat> this got a little personal. Um, all right, uh, guys, it's only awkward if we let it be awkward, right? Um, real quick before I end today's episode, I just want to talk about uh, Brother Shroud, officially part of the uh, channel Frost and Fist right now. We're currently looking at getting our our uh, our title screen adjusted and our little logo adjusted, um, which will be cool. And, uh, yeah, every Sunday you'll be able to expect a Shrouded Sunday where he'll talk about the lore in the world of War uh, Warhammer 40K. And he's starting a new series he just started this past Monday on um, called Straight from the Page. And this is where Shroud will give you a book report based on some of these Warhammer uh, 40K novels that he's read. Man has read well over 100 um, Warhammer 40K novels and... Um, he's got like, I think 12 years of experience or more reading these books. So the man has a wealth of information when it comes to Warhammer 40k books. Um, and 
I'm so pleased that he will be sharing that that knowledge with all of us here on the Frost Amp Fist. Alright guys, so the last thing for this video is the Wolf Brother question of the week. And this is totally not being asked after I've already signed out and said stay frosty. So, um, through the magic of YouTube time travel, my question for this week is, I want you to name one positive thing that you're excited about for 8th edition so far, and one thing you yet have reservations on. Thank you so much for your time, guys, and I'm looking forward to your answers. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you liked this episode, then grab up an ox and smash that like button in the name of the Emperor. And uh, drop me some comments down below letting me know what you thought of this Wolf Brother Wednesday. And, of course, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, then Shroud, Freak, and I would love to have you as part of the pack here on the Frost and Fist. Until next time, guys, stay frosty.